Hey guys, welcome to Through the Bible Verse by Verse, a plain and simple study of the entire Bible, book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse. But you're in Joshua, the book of Joshua, as they prepare to cross the Jordan. And so we're, in, we're going to start in chapter 3, hopefully make it through chapter 5. We'll see. Um, so let's get right in it. Um, God has just... Alright, let's... Uh, Joshua chapter 3. Now, in chapter 2, remember that God, uh, Joshua sent, sent out two spies secretly, uh, and they found the house of a prostitute named Rahab, and in her astounding faith, she actually hides them because the king had found out they were there investigating the land, and so, of course, he was the king was uh, looking to capture them, but Rahab hid them, and then uh, they swore to her that they would protect her. Um, one, if they didn't, if she didn't tell them, tell the king of their mission, and two, if um, um, she tied a scarlet thread over the door, and then they stayed in uh, when they returned to take the city. Uh, so now uh, they have returned back to Joshua. Uh, verse 1 says, Joshua started early the next morning and left the Archaea Grove with all of the Israelites. They went as far as the Jordan and stayed there before crossing. After three days, the officers went through the camp and commanded the people, When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God carried by the Levitical priests, you must break camp and follow it, but keep a distance of about a thousand yards between yourselves in the ark. Do not go near it so that you can see the way to go, for you have not traveled this way before. Joshua told the people, consecrate yourself because the Lord will do wonders among you tomorrow. Now this consecration probably also uh, involved them abstaining from sexual relationships with the, with the, between the married couples. Verse 6, then he said to the priest, take the ark of the covenant and go ahead of the people. So they carried the Ark of the Covenant and went ahead of them. So they were going to follow the priest, again, about a thousand yards, okay? They were going to follow the uh, the priest. And, and, and the, the idea, as he said, was so that they could see which way to go. When the priest would turn left or right, they would be able to follow. Verse 7, the Lord spoke to Joshua, Today I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all the Israelites. So they will know that I will be with you just as I was with Moses. Command the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant when you reach the edge of the waters. Stand in the Jordan. Then Joshua told the Israelites, Come closer and listen to the words of the Lord your God. He said, You will know that the living God is among you and that he will certainly dispo uh, dis and he certainly disposes before you the Canaanites, Hittites, Hivites, Perizzites, Gigarites, Amorites, and the Jebusites. Uh, take a note that the Jebusites later would become Israel, uh, Jerusalem. Uh, verse 11, when the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth goes ahead of you into the Jordan, now choose 12 men from the tribes of Israel, one man from each tribe, and when the feet of the priests who carry the Ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, come to rest in the Jordan's waters, its waters would be cut off. The waters flowing downstream would stand up in a mass. And when the people broke camp uh, to cross the Jordan, the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant ahead of the people. Now, the Jordan's overflowed its banks throughout the harvest season. But as soon as the priests carrying the Ark reached the Jordan, their feet touched the waters as its edge. And the waters flowing downstream stood still, rising up, and the masses that extended as far as Adam, as Adam, a city next to Zerathen, the waters flowing downstream into the Sea of Arabat, the Dead Sea, was completely cut off, and the people crossed opposite Jordan, and the priests carrying the Ark of the Lord's Covenant stood firmly on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan, while Israel cross on dry ground the entire nation had finished crossing the Jordan so they had now crossed the land now we're going to see this is a new era for Israel 
they are now in the promised land that God had swore uh, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so, um, this is um, uh, uh, again a whole new ball game for them, a new era. Verse four. Uh, this is chapter four now. Verse. Four says, after the entire nation finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord spoke to Joshua, choose 12 men from the people, one man from each tribe, and command them, take 12 stones from this place in the middle of the Jordan, where the priests are standing, carrying them, carrying them with you, and set them down at the place where you spend the night. Talking about the rocks. So Joshua summoned 12 men he had selected from the Israelites, one man from each tribe, and said to them, go across the to the ark of the Lord your God in the middle of the Jordan. Each of you lift up a stone on his shoulders, one for each of the Israelite tribes, so that this will be a sign among you in the future when your children ask you, what do these stones mean to you? And you should tell them, the waters of the Jordan were cut off in front of the ark of the Lord's covenant. When it crossed the Jordan, uh, the Jordan's waters were cut off. Therefore, these stones will always be a memorial for the Israelites. Now, it would be, if Israel had stayed true, faithful to the Lord, they, we would have saw these stones, these kind of memorials, and that, that's why they're called memorials. They, they honor, they also, they show the sign is here. This is what God has done. It would, and it would have been a testimony to them um, that this is the very spot where the, the Jordan River's were parted. Verse 8, the Israelites did just as Joshua commanded them. The twelve men took the stones from the middle of the Jordan, one for each of the Israelites' tribes, just as the Lord had told Joshua. And they carried them to the camp and set them down there. Joshua also set up twelve stones in the middle of the Jordan where the priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant were standing. And the stones are there to this day. Now, let me make a quick note. Notice this, this phrase here, the stones are there to this day. Now, here's the question. What day is he referring to? Now, remember I told you in the intro that there are debates as to, like, some people think Ezra wrote uh, these books. And I want to say this statement sort of shows that Ezra didn't write it because, one, um, Ezra would have been writing 70 years after the Babylonian invasion, all uh, um, Israel was Israel was actually destroyed some seventy years by the Assyrians, okay, and then Jerusalem destroyed, um, and so the land was desolate, and by desolate meaning it was ruined. So it's very unlikely that these stones were there during the time seventy years after the Babylonian Empire. So whenever the, the, he's talking about whoever wrote this, he's saying that these stones were there to this day. And I'm thinking it's more in that time frame of Joshua or shortly thereafter. <clears throat> um, now, I, I would also concede we don't know for sure because it's not clearly spelled out in the text here. Verse 10, the priest carrying the ark continued standing in the middle of the Jordan until everything was completed that the Lord had commanded Joshua to tell the people in keeping with all that Moses had commanded Joshua. The people hurried across and that and after everyone had finished crossing the priests with the ark of the Lord crossed in the sight of the people. The Reubenites, Gadites, and half a tribe of uh, Manasseh went in battle formation in front of the Israelites as Moses had instructed them about 40,000 equipped for war crossed to the plains of the Jericho in the Lord's presence. So now they are there. Remember, they, uh, the, the Reubenites and the, and the Gadites and the half a tribe and the Man, um, um, uh, Manasseh have their inheritance on the other side of the Jordan. Actually, in the cities where they dis uh, destroyed those great kings, Sihon and Og. Uh, verse 14, On that day the Lord exalted Joshua in the sight of all of Israel, and they revered him throughout his life as they had revered Moses. So um, uh, Mo Joshua here is now established as their leader, the king leader. Verse 15, Lord told Joshua, 
commanded the priests who carried the ark of the testimony to come up from the Jordan. So Joshua commanded the priests come up from the Jordan. And when the priests carrying the ark of the Lord's covenant came up from the middle of the Jordan, and their feet stepped out on solid ground, the waters of the Jordan resumed their course, um, flowing over the banks as before. Now, this is an important point here because there are some people who would try to make it seem like maybe the Israelites crossed over on a puddle. No, the banks were overflowing. Not only did you have the river, but the banks themselves were overflowing. Okay, and so God, and then even if it was, remember, they also crossed on dry ground. Okay, so verse 19. And the people came up from the Jordan on the 10th day of the first month and the, uh, and camped at Gilead on the eastern limits of Jericho. Then Joshua set up in Gilead the 12 stones they had taken from the Jordan. And he said to Israelites, In the future, when your children ask their fathers, What is the meaning of these stones? You should tell your children. Israel crossed the Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan before you until he had crossed until you were crossed over just as the Lord your God did at the Red Sea um, which he dried up before us until we had crossed over this is so that all the people of the earth may know that the Lord's hand is mighty and so that you may always fear the Lord your God what is sad is that the earth will know and to, uh, during that day everybody around they knew the sad thing is that the Israel, however, did not fear uh, the Lord. All right, chapter five. We're moving along pretty good here, uh, but this is the this is coming the crossing now. So now Israel has crossed the Jordan. They're in their homeland. Verse one says, "When all of the Amorite kings across the Jordan to the west." And all the Canaanite kings near the sea heard how the Lord had dried up the waters of the Jordan before the Israelites until they had crossed over. They lost heart and lost, and their carriage failed because of the Israelites. Now, the interesting thing about this is that, remember, they don't submit to God. Yeah, they see this. Remember, he just said, the earth will know this. They do, but the sad thing is, Instead of having faith as Rahab did, they're going to continue in their and 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 be hardened in their excuse me, hardened in their sin. Verse two. At that time, the Lord said to Joshua, "Make flint lives and circumcise the Israelites' men again." So Joshua made flint lives and circumcised the Israelites' men at uh, Gilbert uh, Holot. And this is the reason Joshua circumcised them. All the people came out of Egypt who were males. All the men of war had died in the wilderness along the way after they had come out of Egypt. Though all the people who came out of Egypt were circumcised, none of the people born in the wilderness along the way were circumcised after they came out of Egypt. For the Israelites wandered in the, in the wilderness 40 years unto all the nation's men of war who had came out of Egypt had died off because they did not obey the Lord. So the Lord vowed never to let them see the land he had sworn to their fathers to give us, a land flowing with milk and honey. Um, verse 7, Joshua raised up their, jo I'm sorry, verse 7, Joshua raised up their sons in their place. And it was these he circumcised and they were still uncircumcised so they had not been circumcised along the way after the entire nation had been circumcised they stayed where they were in the camp until they recovered and the Lord said to Joshua today I have rolled away the disgrace of Egypt from you therefore their place is called Gilgad to this day now what is interesting about this thing besides ouch um, because they should have been circum. Well, remember this was during the time when Moses was giving the law. So for forty years they had not circumcised the males. Under the law, the, circum uh, the, the, the male child is to be circumcised on the eighth day. As adults, this is more. It's a painful process, 
And it took him about three days, at least three days to heal. Now, if you remember, they were now most vulnerable. In other words, had all of the kings around had realized, hey, these guys are sitting around sore. They could have attacked them, right? But God protected them. Now, you remember when Dinah, Jacob's daughter, was raped and uh, the two sons of Israel uh, had said, hey, tell you what we do. I think it was Levi and Simeon. He said, look, if you circumcise yourself. In fact, let me go back for a moment. Uh, the, 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 it was the, the prince, um, so the son of the king of the land. He loved Dinah and raped her, but he still wanted to marry her. And they, and they wanted to join forces and forces together. But Simeon and Levi, out of their anger, you know, uh, told them, okay, tell you what, if you all get circumcised, then we can we can have a covenant together. Uh, and we will, you know, hey, we all live together and happiness. But it was the rules that when they circumcised him, it took them three days to heal. And they were sore and they were weak. And then Simeon and uh, Levi went through and killed all the men of that village of Shechem, Shechem, okay? And so my point of saying that is, here you had all of the men, this generation, who did not get circumcised. So all these men were sitting around, they could have been conquered. The difference is, remember, God said, I will be with you. And he did, he protected them. Verse 10, he says, while the Israelites camped at Gilgad, on the plains of Jericho, they kept the Passover on the evening of the 14th day of the month. The day after Passover, they ate unleavened bread and roasted grains from the produce of the land. And that's interesting there. And the day after they ate from the produce of the land, the manna ceased, since there was no more manna for Israel. They ate from the crops of the land of Canaan that year. So, Remember, for 40 years, they had this supernatural bread that would appear. Later, one of the writers would call it the food of angels, right? And it was like a wafer. It's kind of a sweet uh, thing, a sweet kind of a bread taste. Um, and, and that's how God preserved them and fed them for 40 years. Now, as they enter the land, he says, they no longer need uh, the manna. That stopped, and now they're going to eat and, and also prosper off of the land that God now is giving them. And so they kept the first Passover coming into the land. Okay, the first Passover. All right, um, verse 13. When Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. And Joshua approached him and asked, Are you for us? for our enemies. Now, whenever sometimes angels would appear, they had an appearance of men. Um, the, the appearance probably was of a very fine-looking man, and certainly more than the average man, but still it was the appearance of a man. In theological terms, they call it an angel often, and in some cases, when the Lord or God would appear, uh, they would refer to it as a theophany. But, they, but it still looked like a man. Verse 14, he says, Neither, uh, come on, I think it's going up here. He says, Neither, he replied, I have now come as commander of the Lord's army. Now, this could have been uh, Michael the archangel. He was the warring uh, Mark angel. Come on, now, my thing is freezing up here. Okay. All right, so um, verse 14 again. Neither he replied, I have, come, I have now come as commander of the Lord's army. Then Joshua bowed with his face to the ground and worshiped and asked him, What does my Lord want to say to his servant? Then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. So you see this sort of, to me, appearance like that of Moses and now Joshua is leading the people and he's also leading the people in Israel he's leading the people in Israel um, 
in the promised land. So now God's covenant somewhat is fulfilled. We can say that he's now brought the people into the promised land. And so in the next chapter, we're going to begin as they're going to begin to now conquer the land and um, divide the land up as God has promised. All right, guys, I will see you in the next study. See you then.